Now for more insight on the refugee crisis in the EU, we're joined by Marisa Matias. She's a member of the European Parliament from Portugal and as part of a group that deals with issues in Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon and Syria. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. You wrote a recent article calling on Europe to take the lead and solve this migrant crisis and you also called it the responsibility of the world. So what needs to happen at this point? A lot of things need, need to happen, but we have to take on our responsibilities because what is happening is a humanitarian tragedy and it was not the outcome neither of a natural disaster nor God's will. So there were responsibilities with military interventions, namely in Libya and other countries, and uh, the refugees coming from Syria have to do also with interference from Western countries and European Union. So, of course, we need to have a response on that because we have huge responsibilities on that as well. You are a critic of your own country, Portugal, which doesn't have one refugee in the country. There's actually a small quota for refugees, and lawmakers there want that small number lowered even more. Why is that? I cannot understand. I think that the behavior of Portuguese prime minister is not understandable, honestly. So we had a quota of 15 to, to 2013, and then we had a quota of 45 for 2014. Till now, we didn't receive any refugee from the 45 quota of 2014. And then the European Council in June decided to, to deliver a quota of 2045. And our prime minister tried to negotiate in order to reduce it to 1,400. So I don't understand. I think that's not understandable. I think also now with the pressure from other European countries, the, the Portuguese government is trying also to change the behavior. But we should start at least to receive refugees. We, we didn't do that yet. And I hope because that we solve it. Because when you say 304 thousand refugees enter into the European territory last year. We are talking about 0.045 percent of the European population. There's a huge imbalance also towards the neighboring countries. When we think, for instance, in Lebanon, which half of the population is now refugee population. So there's also some kind of problems that we need to solve in terms of articulation with neighboring countries, and helping there doesn't solve it. Uh, we need to receive, of course, we need these emergency response, but we also need to solve the conflict in a political way, I would say, and we need to fight the causes. It's not um, acceptable, for instance, that uh, oil is still be by, bought by, the con by some countries uh, from the territories which are occupied by the so-called uh, Islamic State. It's not acceptable. Marisa, I have to ask, yes. we have about a minute left. You know, everyone's talking about this three-year-old Syrian boy who washed up on the beach the other yeah. day. The world's attention is on this story. Um, very quickly, is this a turning point? We just heard that Austria and Germany are going to allow uh, refugees and migrants into their countries. Are we going to see something happen now? I hope that we will see something happen because we need to see something happen. I think it was a turning point, uh, but I don't know if it, did, it was enough or not. Uh, it's impossible not to be moved with that, and we are talking about thousands of lives. But I think also in a critical way, uh, and uh, there's a, also an instrumental side on this, because European countries need population. So we could think about a, a solution that could be positive for both sides, but mainly we cannot forget those people who don't want to leave their home, their lands. And also we need to solve the problems in the origin. All right. Marisa Matiers, thank you so much for joining us from thank Porto. You.